Hey guys, this is Mr. Willis, and welcome to Intro to Macro. This multi-part summer video series will introduce you to all the basics about macroeconomics so that when you start the course, you have a foundation from which you can succeed, pass that AP exam, and get those college credits. Your job is to watch the video lectures, take good notes, be prepared to put principles you've learned into practice through work and discussion, and take an assessment the first week of the course. Today's topic is topic number one, scarcity and opportunity cost. First, I want to clear up a misconception that most people have about economics. When I say economics, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, if you're like most people, the first thing that people think about when they hear economics is money. But economics actually has very little to do with money. Instead, economics is all about choices. Who makes them, why they make them, and the effects of them. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Whether it seems like it or not, every single decision you make every day is economic. Which brings us to economic law number one. Scarcity exists. Scarcity is the condition that constantly exists as a result of society not having enough resources to produce what everyone needs and wants. Loosely, it's defined as limited resources for unlimited needs and wants. Let's put scarcity in perspective. Think of everything that you would have if you could have anything that you wanted. I'm talking anything. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. Okay, okay, we get it, Nick Cage. We know what you would ask for. Personally, I would start with the Lamborghini from The Dark Knight. I want a beach house in Maui, a private jet. One million dollars. The list would almost seem infinite, enough that I could think of something almost every second. And I haven't even started talking about food and necessities yet. Now you go ahead and do it. Think of everything, everything you absolutely could have, if you could have anything you wanted. Now, multiply that by about 7 billion, or roughly the size of the population of the planet Earth. It is impossible to give everybody on Earth everything they could want and need at the same time because there simply aren't enough resources on the globe. And that's because everything is scarce. Even oxygen is scarce. If you leave the Earth's atmosphere, you implode. End of story. So as a result of scarcity existing, all economic participants must make choices about how to carefully allocate and use scarce resources. If these choices are made carelessly, we could have needs unmet and scarce resources wasted. In other words, some people around the world would go without basic necessities, while others not only have their needs met, but also have a large number of their wants met. This is why we look at homelessness, poverty, and starvation around the world and want to do something about it. It just doesn't seem to be in the best interests of the human race to have people going without their basic needs. So we try to answer the question of how to better meet those needs with the scarce resources we have available. And so, economics is defined as the study of how individuals, firms, and governments make choices to efficiently use limited resources to achieve the maximum satisfaction of social needs and wants. In other words, it's the study of how we deal with scarcity. To best answer the question of scarcity, all the economic participants in any economic system come together to answer the three essential economic questions. What goods and services should be produced? How should they be produced? And for whom should they be produced? We'll go over specifically how each economic system will answer these three essential questions in a later lecture. Which brings us to our next economic law. Every economic decision involves trade-offs. Trade-offs are each of the alternative options given up when making a decision. In other words, what did you give up when you made your choice? Every decision involves multiple trade-offs. But each economic decision only has one opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is defined as the most desired trade-off of a decision. Think of it this way. When you decided to come to class today, there are lots of trade-offs that you gave up. Sleeping in, going to eat breakfast, sleeping in, going to the beach, going to Disneyland, sleeping in. Each of those is a trade-off of that decision. But the one that you would have desired the most will be the opportunity cost to come into class. Let me guess, sleeping in. Every economic participant has an opportunity cost when they make a decision. And we weigh those opportunity costs in different ways. Consumers are easiest to analyze. You buy one good or you buy the other. You can't buy both with the amount of income you have available. If you buy one good, you cannot buy another. Even our behavioral choices have economic opportunity cost. Let me use Star Wars to bring the point home. In Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker made an economic decision to join the Emperor and become a Sith Lord. I will do whatever you ask. Why did he do it? To save his wife. Just help me save Padme's life. The opportunity cost of becoming Darth Vader for Anakin was giving up the Jedi way. In The Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker chose to throw himself off of the platform in Bespin 
and destroy himself rather than to join his father and turn to the dark side. Come with me. It is the only way. Tell Ray to come find me in The Force Awakens and bring me my lightsaber. Firms must analyze opportunity costs when making decisions about production. Let's take this example from Ford Motor Company. With its given resources, Ford can produce at two combinations. Combination A has Ford producing 10 million trucks and 25 million cars. Combination B has Ford producing 30 million trucks and only 10 million cars. What would be the opportunity cost for Ford if it were to increase truck production from 10 million to 30 million? To increase truck production from 10 million to 30 million, Ford Motor Company would have to move from combination A to combination B. What that would mean is less resources would be available for the production of cars. Instead of producing 25 million cars, Ford can now only produce 10 million cars. So what is the opportunity cost for Ford to increase truck production from 10 million to 30 million? The opportunity cost is 15 million cars. Opportunity costs can also be weighed when governments make decisions. The United States government can produce military goods and consumer goods with its scarce resources available. At combination A, the United States can produce 500 million tons of military goods and 500 million tons of consumer goods. At combination B, they can produce 150 million tons of military goods and 800 million tons of consumer goods. But what would be the opportunity cost for the United States to increase military production from 150 million tons to 500 million tons? If the United States were to increase military production from 150 million tons to 500 million tons, it would have to move from combination B to combination A, meaning that it would have to decrease its consumer good production from 800 million tons to 500 million tons. So the opportunity cost of increasing military production in the United States is going to be 300 million tons of consumer goods. This is a real dilemma faced by governments everywhere around the world, and it's called the guns or butter dilemma. Meaning because of scarcity, if you want more military goods, you have to give up consumer goods and vice versa. Okay, time for a quick review of today's major points. First, economic law number one, scarcity exists. Law number two, because of scarcity, we must make choices. And law number three, every choice we make has an opportunity cost. And we like to weigh those an awful lot to determine if we really made a good choice. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time on Intro to Macro. 